Hello students, welcome to lecture series of automobile engineering. Myself Hardik Shah and today we will discuss about the subject of automobile engines. Okay, today we are discussing about the topic on the cooling system. Okay, we have pre uh, previously discussed about the cooling systems in simple uh, engines. Okay, and there are basically two systems. First one was air cooling and second one was liquid cooling. Okay, we have discussed both of them. And in this session, we will discuss about the different parts of the water cooling system. Okay, so now let's start our video. So basically, the main parts of the cooling systems are radiator and pressure cap. Thereafter, pump. Thereafter, radiator fan. Thereafter, plumbing. Thereafter, fluids. Thereafter, thermostat valve, temperature gauge, and hose pipes. Okay, so let's see all of them one by one. First one is radiator. So the radiator is a type of a heat exchanger. It is designed to transfer the heat from the hot flows through it to the air blown through it by the fan. Okay. So most modern cars uses aluminum radiators and the radiators are made by brazing thin aluminum fins to the flattened aluminum tubes. Okay. So the coolant flows from the inlet to outlet through many uh, tubes mounted in a parallel arrangement okay now the fins conducts the heat from the tube and the transfer it to the air flowing through the radiator okay so there are normally three types of radiators first one is gilted tube radiator thereafter tubular radiator thereafter honeycomb or you can say cellular radiator okay now first one is gill tube radiator what is that so this is perhaps the oldest type of radiator uh, although it is still in use okay so in this uh, uh, radiator what happens the water flows inside the tubes now each tube has a large number of annular rings okay or you can say fins which are pressed formally over the outside of the surface now next is tubular what is that so the only difference between the gilled tubes and the tubular one is that in this case there are no separate fins or you can say individual tubes okay and the radiator vertical tubes passes through the thin fin uh, thin fins copper sheets which runs horizontally okay this was about the second part third one is honeycomb or you can say cellular radiator so the radiate uh, cellular radiator consists of a large number of individual air cells which are actually surrounded by the water okay now in this the closing of the any passage affects only that small part of the cooling system because it is actually different fine so however in a tubular radiator if one tube becomes closed then the whole cooling system is actually affected by it okay and uh, thereafter the second part that is the pressure cap over the radiator so the radiator cap actually increases the boiling point of your coolant by approximate 25 degree okay now how does this simple cap actually do this the same way a pressure cooker increases the boiling temperature of the water the same way this cap acts okay so this cap is actually a pressure release valve with its spring okay on a or uh, in a car it is usually set at the 15 pressure okay 15 psi now the boiling point of the water increases when the water is placed under this pressure now when the fluid is in a cooling system heats up it expands and causing the pressure to build up now this cap is the only place where this pressure can escape so the setting of the spring de uh, defines the pressure in the cooling system now when the pressure reaches 15 uh, psi the pressure pushes the valve open and allowing coolant to escape from the cooling system now this coolant flows through the overflow tube into the bottom of the overflow tank okay so this arrangement keeps air out of the system now when the radiator cools back down a vacuum is created in the cooling system that pulls open another spring loaded valve and sucking all the water back in front of the bottom of the overflow tank and replace the water that was expelled okay so this was basically about the radiators thereafter the pump so the pump is the simple centrifugal pump which is driven by the belt connected to the crankshaft of the engine okay now the pump circulates fluid whenever the engine is running the water pump uses centrifugal forces to send the fluid to the outside while it spins causing the fluid to be drawn from the center continuously 
okay now the inlet to the pump is located near the center so that the fluid returning from the radiator hits this pump vents okay now the pump vents fling the fluid to the outside of the pump where it can enter the engine okay so the fluid leaving the pump flows first through the engine block and the cylinder head then it flows into the radiator and finally back to the pump done so this was about the pump next is radiator fan so it is used to draw the air towards the radiator okay and help in cooling process so the radiator fan has actually four or more blades then it spins rapidly to provide the sufficient air that would cool the engine now it is usually mounted between the radiator and the engine so that air can easily get to the radiator okay now some cars have an additional fans also in front of the radiator in order to draw more cool air into the engine okay especially when it is so hot or you can say hotter conditions and the vehicle isn't moving very fast or it is a very little cool air reaches the radiator and thus the engine is not cooled properly okay so this was about the basically pump and fan now next is plumbing so the cooling system has a lot of plumbing or you can say piping okay we will start at from the pump and walk through the system so the pump sends the fluid into the engine block where it makes its way through the passage in the engine around the cylinder okay then it returns through the cylinder head of the engine okay now the thermostat is located where the fluid leaves the engine so the plumbing around the thermostats sends the fluid back to the pump directly if the thermostat is closed and if it is open the fluid goes to the radiator first and then it comes back to the pump okay so there is also a separate circuit for the heating system also okay now this circuit takes the fluid from the cylinder head and passes it through the heater core or you can say heater coil and then it gives its pump to back okay back to pump thereafter uh, fluids so car operates in a wide variety of the temperature uh, from uh, below freezing point to the approximate 38 degree to uh, 50 degree okay so whatever fluid is used to cool the engine has to have a very low freezing point and a high boiling point okay and it has to have a capacity to hold a very a lot of heat okay it should absorb the heat so water is one of the most effective fluid for the holding the heat but water also freezes too high a temperature to be used in a car engine okay so the fluid in the most cars used is a mixture of water and ethylene glycol okay ethylene glycol so it is also known as the antifreeze solution so by adding the ethylene glycol to the water the boiling point and freezing points are improved significantly okay so the temperature of the coolant can sometimes reach approximate 120 to 150 degree also okay now even with ethylene glycol added these temperatures would boil the coolant so sometimes additionally must be done or you can say some addition must be done to raise its boiling point okay so the cooling system uses the pressure to further raise the boiling point of the coolant now just as the boiling temperature of the water is higher in a pressure cooker the boiling temperature of the coolant is higher okay if your pressurized uh, if your uh, system is pressurized okay now most of the cars have a pressure limit of or approximate 14 to 15 pound okay uh, per square inch you can say uh, that is psi okay so which rises the boiling point uh, another 25 degree so the coolant can withstand the high temperatures okay this was about the coolant and fluids next is thermostat so this thermostat valve allows the engine to heat up quickly and then keep the engine at the constant temperature okay now it does this by regulating the amount of water that goes through the radiator okay now at low temperatures the outlet to the radiator is completely blocked okay it is packed so all of the coolant is recirculated back through the engine now once the temperature of the coolant rises above you can say 80 or 90 degree the thermostats open uh, starts to open and allow some fluids to flow through the radiator now by that time the coolant reaches approximate 100 degrees 
so the thermostat is now fully open all the way okay so this was all about the basic or you can say main components of the liquid cooling system okay so basically in cooling system the important questions are like this so first one is explain air cooling system thereafter second one is explain any water cooling system so basically in water cooling system there are different four systems okay like thermosiphon system thereafter a uh, force cooling system or you can say force circulation and other two systems thereafter they are also asking about the difference between the uh, water cooling system and air cooling system and about the antifreeze solutions also okay so i have attached the important questions in a description you can also find that and this is it from the cooling system chapter we will meet in the next section thank you so much goodbye